things that we use to heal ourselves, they are using to literally turn humans into weapons. The notion that the United States sponsors some sort of super soldier program is not just untrue, it's patently absurd. Next question. Neural control, voluntary limb replacement. This is happening. The only question that remains is how far will we allow it to go? Well, that was just a part of the teaser trailer for the official Call of Duty Black Ops 3 Ember that is set to release April 26th. Uh, the tagline for this is that in the next 50 years, technological advancements will lead us into a world where only those who risk going too far will find out how far we can actually go. Now, joining me in studio, Rob Dew and Joe Biggs. We're going to give our review of the trailer. So... Do what do you think? Is this predictive programming or, I mean, is this already here? Well, I think it was an amazing piece of editing. As an editor, I was kind of blown away by it. And yes, I do think it's a piece of predictive programming. And we ran an article back in 2010. I just want to read this definition of predictive programming from Alan Watt. Things or ideas which would otherwise be seen as bizarre, vulgar, undesirable, or impossible are inserted into films slash video games, you could put right there, in the realm of fantasy. When the viewer watches these films slash plays these games, his or her mind is left open to suggest, and the conditioning process begins. These same movies, which are designed to program the average person, can give the discerning viewer a better understanding of the workings and the plan of the world agenda. It's from Alan Watt. And, yeah, I think you're seeing a lot of that predictive programming stuff. And it starts off as, you know, great things. We've got working bionic legs. We've got eye implants that can help the blind people see, cochlear implants to help people hear. But then where does it go too far? I mean, there's some people that are saying that the um, the next person, the person who's immortal has already been born. Yeah, So, right. you know, when does that go too far? What I think is interesting, though, in this trailer teaser, they always, the people who are questioning things are like religious zealots are mobs of crazy people. Right. It's never a scientist going, well, you know, maybe this, maybe we should think about what we're doing. Yeah, which in, in today's reality, it is actually scientists and people like Elon Musk and F Future of Life Institute having all these uh, people working in the field of AI signing on to say, hey, let's let's make sure that we go, go ahead with this, uh, with ethical thoughts, you know, moving ahead with this. So Biggs, what do you think? Would you be for or against super soldiers? Well, this is the thing. If it gets to a point where the government has built this huge army of super soldiers who are like cyborgs, half human, half that, we're going to get dominated and someone's going to have to step up and volunteer to get cyborged up and I'll be willing to do it. So like a good Terminator? <laughs> yeah, I'll be a, a good Terminator. Terminator. I'm going to not have to go back in time because tyranny's already here and I'll be... Uh, but do you, do you think they're going to let you maintain your humanity, though? Don't you think that they're going to say you're going to be implanted with all of this? Well, it's just like Robo. Robocop was able to fight all the program that he had, and the realness came out in him, and he became good. And that's what's going to happen with me. But the stormtroopers couldn't withstand Order 66. They just went and slaughtered all the Jedi. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> these guys have Jedi mind tricks. I don't have that, and neither do we. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, it, all in all, I'm going to go get the game because I want to play it and see what it's all about. It, it's always interesting. So, yeah, I mean, I really do think there is predictive programming in these games. I mean, I remember being a kid playing the original Call of Duties, you know, in World War One and Two and all that, where you're running around and thinking like, oh, my God, I want to go fight for my country. I want to go do that. And sure enough, I jumped in and signed up and joined the military. And it's nowhere near as cool as these video games make it to be. Right. It's uh, completely wrecks and ruins your life. Uh, you know, then you get put it's on a lot hotter drugs. than video games. Yeah, it's a lot hotter. <laughs> it's very tiring. You know, you don't have to carry uh, equipment and rucksacks when you're playing video games. But I mean, I do think that that works on children to help promote that whole join the military, right. sacrifice yourself. And then when you get out there, you find out that you're not really fighting for your country anymore and the people. You're fighting for these bankers and these people who want to dominate the globe. So it's it's definitely something that you know, just kind of throws you out there. Well, it, and you can't start over with extra lives or anything like that. You only get this right, one once life. Right, you die, that's it. But, it. but is it predictive programming, or are they just playing on reality? Because a lot of that technology is already here. We're hearing a head transplant is taking place here soon. And yep. I also thought it was pretty interesting that there were no robots. It was all humans that were just upgraded. Yeah, it shows that they had no arms or legs when they had the thermals on. You could just see the chest and the head. That was the only thing that picked up on the heat sensor. And the rest of the body was just, you know, mechanized. Mm -hmm. Well, and we could just look at a few articles that just came out recently. Uh, here's one that just came out uh, 
April 6th, former Winnipegger says bionic leg, almost like the real thing. Huh. And in there it shows, uh, in, in that trailer, it shows uh, this female runner winning the gold medal. We saw Oscar Pastorius, the blade runner. Yeah. Right, yeah, um, that's... You know, but maybe... Maybe all that fame and stuff, be having the bionic legs, it seems it probably went to his head and he ended up, you know, uh, going after his girlfriend, shooting. Yeah. So. Well, a lot of people are so against that. Currently, they're saying, well, that's not fair. You know, that has a propulsion mechanism. And right. It brings him beyond what a human is capable of doing. And they're saying, well, no, I'm a human. Th these are my legs. So there's that. There, right now, we're having those ethical arguments, but here they're saying in 50 years, we won't be having those people are going to be we'll winning be the gold that. medals. And I mean, well, right now you have the the whole ethical situation. You know, should we allow scientists to play God? You know, you know, are you one of those people who believes that everything happens for a reason? And if so, if you lost your leg, you just need to deal with it. I've got buddies here in the military who have missing legs and things like that. It hasn't slowed them down. They they've gotten up. They still work out. They're in shape. And they don't let it get them down. I mean, are they no interested reason. in bionic implants or extra limbs? I mean, uh, like my buddy uh, Nate actually has uh, one of the little uh, uh, like the uh, 3D yeah, the little thing, the part on the leg or whatever. Yeah, and I mean, he uses it from time to time. But I mean, losing his leg never slowed him down. I think once you do that, it's gonna you're kind of playing the realm of God. And I just think that's a little. Well, we out are, there and weird. as humans, we are very adaptable. But the, I mean, with 3D printing, all that stuff is gonna be easily accessible. I mean, they 3D printed a, a foot for a baby duck so that the duck could swim again. So I mean, and that's just an animal. Now, of course, the things that they can do with humans. Um, but let's look at some of these other. Well, I wanna go back to the predictive programming angle. Um, they say the average gamer is about 30. Um, the biggest game of 2012 was Call of Duty 2. But I found a, a guy who's a Call of Duty guy, he, he put out a, a, a survey and said, what's your average age? And he got 500 responses back. His average age was 18 that he got. And so you're looking at, so half the people are under 18, half the people are over 18. So you've got a whole mass of people playing this game mm -hmm. who are ripe for getting programmed. Right. And then they're, they're, these are people about to go to college and they're gonna go out in the workforce and they're gonna be the next generation of leaders, which when you're watching this trailer, it's set at the end, uh, what, 2065, when we see this uh, whistleblower who's talking about the military technology being ahead. And, and so that's an interesting thing. How, how far ahead is military technology? Right. And I found on a message board, it was interesting, uh, this guy who happens to be a Navy SEAL says it's only about 12 to 18 months ahead, yeah. which I think is ridiculous. Uh, they have giant lasers that they shoot through holes of ships and right. stuff like that. They're talking about handheld ray guns we're yeah. never going to see this stuff in, in, in 100 years I don't exactly. think, for They're the local gonna, consumer. Well, we see they have these conventions where they will start trickling down that military technology to local law enforcement. You know, they have, they're like, hey, come by the sound cannon and you can penetrate any protests and make people vomit instantaneously or c cause paralysis or, you know, burning in their, in their uh, bones and stuff. I'm but glad it's, they it's didn't only, have that it's only momentarily. And, and you're thinking, what in the world? And there's showing this off to law enforcement, you know, to be able to use their military technology. But of course, it goes beyond that because initially they're, they're trying to figure out how to use this uh, in war. That's what it always is. And, you know, war does lead a lot of technology. It creates a lot of technology. Not that I'm saying war is good and we should have it. I think it's horrible. But it does uh, instigate a lot of investment into the, those yeah. areas. So now we got a bunch of wounded warriors coming back. Well, now there's technology into helping those people walk, helping them grab things. Um, you know, so you're having all those types of advances. But yeah, like you were saying, the the, the Dr. Frankenstein is what they're calling him. He he's gonna take this guy's head, who is basically really disabled. He's in a wheelchair. Yeah, he, and, I mean, but he has like you know, his, his got his all of his cognitive abilities. Yeah, right. they're gonna transplant. He says he can do it in under an hour. Make the transplant wow. happen. Then there's more stuff that has to happen after that, but like getting the head off of one onto the other. And who's the donor body? So it's someone that's obviously. It's a guy in Russia. Briefly. It'll be interesting to see if the body rejects it or not. Yeah, we'll see if something like well, that actually happens. I believe happens. the person who's going to, he's. Yeah, Valerie, if you scroll up a little bit, you'll see the guy. Anyway, um, so. Scroll, his name's uh, Valerie Spanierdov. He's a Russian. He's in a wheelchair. I mean, you know, obviously his body is not, you know, what he would want it to be. He's been served, uh, you know. He, has, he didn't get the best of luck when um, the bodies were being dished out. But he suffers from Wardig Hoffman disease, which is some kind of degeneration of the body. Right. And I think that, that they're not predicted to live much longer with a disease like that anyway. Right. So here he's saying, well, I might as well, might as well do it. give it a whirl. And he yeah. says he's scared. He's like, I don't know what's going to happen, but there's a chance that it may be great. 
And, you know, in that instance, he's a pioneer. You know, people didn't know what, were, what was going to happen when you went out into space. There's all those different realms, you know, of, of exploration that went mm -hmm. the first person. You got a 50-50 chance, life or death. You know, that's right. what it is. But, you know, now scientists, it just came out today, scientists fully decode a pair of mammoth DNA genomes. Right. <laughs> I mean, they're getting ready to play God. They're getting ready to bring back the woolly Jurassic mammoth. Park. Yeah, yeah well, it's going to so, happen. I mean, so they're allowing a lot of the elephants to be completely annihilated. They're about extinct. And so they're going to bring back the woolly mammoth. Like, Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the... purpose it's going to serve. Really? <laughs> and, well, you know, and a lot of people say, well, there's we're, we're killing a lot of these species. Now they're saying we're actually finding more species now than ever before. And that there's more species that have ever lived on the earth now than, than have ever lived. It's, it's Life is everywhere and it's happening. Mm. So these doomsdayers, you know, that are putting out games like this that are, you know, it's got a very negative approach on technology. And in this sentence here in the beginning, mankind's greatest mistake will be its inability to control the technology it has created. I, I would say that we're not given the ability to control this technology. We are being forced an agenda of the technology. And that's the secret, I think, behind this game that is going to come out, that there's an agenda behind this that it's not... It's not regular people getting to make the the decisions of how it's yeah. going to be sky. Well, the technology yeah. we get is like, oh, here you can have this, so you can do some social networking with your friends, right. or it takes. Pictures While we're of sucking yourself. in all the data. And yeah, exactly. Using we're it against gonna use, you. I mean, just think the the military just came out and said most of the UFO sightings people s saw way back in the day was actually just us, mm -hmm. and it was the technology that they were using that we didn't have any, we weren't privy to what they were actually doing out there. And Alex said it today. He said, technology is neutral. It was either Alex or David. Uh, one of them said that today. Uh, technology is neutral. And it's how we use it, how we choose to use it. And mm -hmm. it's, our, it's our job and duty as humans to make sure that we check ourselves, that we don't just go, hey, do whatever you want, that we do have these checks and balances to go, how far do we go? Do we start, right. once we start cloning people, is, does that person get a constitution? What yeah. happens there? I mean, what are all the implications of that? And that's what it gets into these weird worlds mm -hmm. that, you know, they had these, when you were in grade school, remember they said, well, you're in a rowboat and you got to kill a couple people who didn't kill. <laughs> you know, they're always trying to justify killing people off in these yeah. different mind games that they play. And I think this is just another way, like who gets to be immortal? Right. How, you know, are you going to get to be immortal? What, what are you, what are you doing for humanity? You know, that's, yeah. that's what it's going to be. It's going to be a test. Yeah, exactly. Well, we're the ones who are going to be fighting against this. So I doubt we get to be immortal. <laughs> and <laughs> so right. uh, one of the big themes in that, on, along that line is that there seems to be, and Ray Kurzweil actually predicted this, that there would be sort of a branching off of humanity where some people would be upgraded and then others would not. Yeah. And they'd be like a lower class. Yeah, you either live in cyborg stand or hippie-topia. That's, that's going to be your, yeah. your two areas of, of, you know, are you going to augment your body and join the Borg? Uh, because, you know, even now they're, they're putting these chips into people. There was a video clip, which I think, you know, maybe we could play this in a second, where this lady's getting the chip in her hand to, like, open doors yeah, and use the copy so machine. She goes, oh, it makes it feel so modern and <laughs> so 2015. Right I mean, there. it was just... A microchip about the size of a grain of rice is injected into her hand. Uh, it felt pretty scary, but at the same time it feel, felt very modern, very 2015. Instead of ID cards or passcodes, workers who sign up for the implant can now open doors with the wave of a hand. Yeah, and that's the you thing know? is they're going to start this whole programming to, to make people look down Oh, yeah. On people, people who don't who, get who the don't chip. want to upgrade. I mean, every time I go to the gym and yeah. the person at the gym has to check me in well, look, they, manually, I mean, they, they're you like, have the barcode on the arm. Are you yeah. sure you don't want to just use your thumbprint? Ugh. I'm like, uh, I'm the reason why you're still here having a job is because. Yeah, they don't they don't see that. Like <laughs> the job that you hate so much that you're getting paid to do. Right. You know, that'll be obsolete. And, you know, when they have the robot reception. Yeah. And IBM has already implemented the Watson program at the Austin VA to yeah. help mm -hmm. take care of veterans. You know, I mean, it's just, it's, it's out of this world. People are scared to take any kind of responsibility for something if they can put well, it on a robot. And going back to that, Australia has just said now everybody's going to have to mandatory take vaccines. Anything that we say, you have to take just because we say it, you know. Oh, we have a vaccine for height. We have a vaccine for baldness. You know, we're just yeah, going to start a injecting you whatever you want. A today on the Alex Jones show actually made that point is, is once, they, once they get to this mandatory vaccination, where do they stop with yeah. that? If they say, oh, well, you... Well, you got to get the chip. Everybody's getting it. You have a personality disorder, so mm -hmm. here's this vaccine for that. And it's a private company's product. I mean, you got the movie Out of Time. You got the RoboCop mm -hmm. out. I mean, all this stuff is leading All into... predictive programming. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs>
Well, okay, so Call of Duty, official Call of Duty, Black Ops 3. I know you're planning on purchasing it, so obviously we'll be doing uh, another review once you actually get to play the game. So how does this work? Are you going to choose to to play as a normal person or as a super soldier? I mean, it's however they have the storyline put out. I mean, it's it's different. Each game varies. Um, some games you get to be like the bad guy. Some games you get to be a cop. Um, this uh, I'm not sure they haven't released a uh, storyline yet on what it's going to be like, but it'll be interesting, and then we'll have a report out about it as soon as it happens. It'll so. definitely be in the future. It looks like it's going to be yeah. based in the future, and, or maybe it'll lead. Maybe it'll take you through that journey. Of because going some of the it. other games have been soldiers inside these uh, robot type suits, and this seems like now it's the transition of you're no longer in a suit. You are you are the, the robot. machine. You are yeah. the robot. You will be the weapon. That will go out and fight wars. Yeah, well, it'll be interesting if it if it allows you to kind of go through some of those ethical decisions, so you can. S I doubt it. Sort of see how those ethical decisions are going to come up in life. Okay. I am a robot. I am here to help. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. <laughs> Absolutely. Crush the humans. <laughs> Ugh. Thank you guys, and I wanted to give a shout out to uh, one of our fans on Twitter that suggested we do a review. Oh yeah, of put this. his tweet up right. And, we'll, and we'll even say his I name. I know Jakari and and Joe Big. Ruben be, Harper. Yes, thank you, Ruben. Uh, they'll be giving you the official Call of Duty Black Ops Three review when that hits stores April 26. Well, thank you all for tuning into the show tonight, and we will see you here again Monday, 7 p.m. Central. For all of recorded history, civilizations around the world praised the health benefits of silver. At InfoWars Life, our mission is to bring you the highest quality, purest, cleanest, effective colloidal silver on the market today for the lowest price available. When it comes to you and your family's health, InfoWarsLife.com is very excited to announce our biggest run yet of Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver, exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Now, InfoWarsLife.com has taken colloidal silver to the next level using a cutting-edge technique that is free of toxic artificial additives. Now more than ever, it's important to stock up on high-quality Silver Bullet from InfoWarsLife.com and to help others during Christmas by teaching them about the powerful benefits of silver. Secure your Silver bullet today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide. The only question that remains is how far will we allow it to go? Well, that was just a part of the teaser trailer for the official Call of Duty Black Ops 3 Ember that is set to release April 26th. Uh, the tagline for this is that in the next 50 years, technological advancements will lead us into a world where only those who risk going too far will find out how far we can actually go. Now, joining me in studio, Rob Dew and Joe Biggs. We're going to give our review of the trailer. So... Same movies, which are designed to program the average person, can give the discerning viewer a better understanding of the workings and the plan of the world agenda. It's from Alan Watt. And yeah, I think you're seeing a lot of that predictive programming stuff. And it starts off as, you know, great things. We've got working bionic legs. We've got eye implants that can help the blind people see, cochlear implants to help people hear. But then where does it go too far? I mean, there's some people that are saying that the, um, the next person, the person who's immortal has already been born. Yeah. So, right. you know, when does that go too far? What I think is interesting, though, in this trailer teaser, they always. The things that we use to heal ourselves, they are using to literally turn humans into weapons. The notion that the United States sponsors some sort of super soldier program is not just untrue, it's patently absurd. Next question. Neural control, voluntary limb replacement, 
this is happening. The people who are questioning things are like religious zealots are mobs of crazy people. Right. It's never a scientist going, well, you know, maybe this, maybe we should think about what we're doing. Yeah, which in, in today's reality, it is actually scientists and people like Elon Musk and F Future of Life Institute having all these uh, people working in the field of AI signing on to say, hey, let's let's make sure that we go, go ahead with this, uh, with ethical thoughts, you know, moving ahead with this. So Biggs, what do you think? Would you be for or against super soldiers? Well, this is the thing. If it gets to a point where the government has built this- Do, what do you think? Is this predictive programming or, I mean, is this already here? Well, I think it was an amazing piece of editing. As an editor, I was kind of blown away by it. And yes, I do think it's a piece of predictive programming. And we ran an article back in 2010. And I just want to read this definition of predictive programming from Alan Watt. Things or ideas which would otherwise be seen as bizarre, vulgar, undesirable, or impossible are inserted into films slash video games, you could put right there, in the realm of fantasy. When the viewer watches these films, slash plays these games, his or her mind is left open to suggest, and the conditioning process begins.